So for Diablo 4 Season 2, there was a little bit of a mixed reaction. Obviously, it's a very polarizing game. But in general, I would have to say probably everyone's opinion of Diablo 4 with the new change and stuff generally trended in a positive direction. So I thought, hey, why don't I, Sweet Phil, weigh in on my final thoughts here for Season 2 now that I've you know, kind of decided to take a break and wait for the next upcoming season. Did you know I actually have a Diablo 4 exclusive channel? Yeah, that's right. I do occasionally post a video here on my main channel, but if you want to see all of the future Diablo 4 stuff, and I'm thinking about even in the future streaming any Diablo 4 I do over on that channel, make sure you subscribe up link down in the description to that channel, along with my video editing channel, just a for fun clips channel and the Phil cast, which I'm really thinking of starting up uh, pretty soon here. So make sure you check those ones out. Now, first of all, of course, I'm going to talk about what like my day one thoughts were. I uh, originally gave Diablo 4 like a 5 out of 10, 6 out of 10. But that was kind of after I seen all the, of the way that the game was going to be originally. And then when the new season came out here, season 2, I kind of raised it up to a 6, 6.5. So I think it got a little bit better from the previous version, you know, adding in uh, the different ways you can search in your inventory, adding in kind of like those bosses at the end, just giving you another little thing to do kind of once you get your character up to higher level um you have higher item power a bunch of little things along those lines and a ton of quality of life changes that you kind of you know i didn't even think about until you get to the you know realizing you didn't have to deal with that stuff whether it's the gems you end up with a ton of gold so you're never really starved for any type of resource whether it's the different materials or for gold to really respects or anything like that like i got the one character eventually up to a hundred I have like 200 and something odd million gold and I never sold anything the entire time. This was just getting gold from Tree of Whispers and random gold pickup and things along those lines. So there was even a ton of little changes like that that, you know, I kind of forget to even mention or bring up for stuff that they fixed or just changed that they thought would make the game better that, uh, you know, it definitely made it uh, kind of smoother. You know, you never had those uh, little times when you couldn't, you know, respec or something, you were out of gold or anything like that. But that initial thought, I will say right now, that was after just the first day. You know, that was just my first initial impressions of the season two. So I thought I'd come ahead and give you my full overall thoughts now that I got a character to 100. I took out the bosses, went and farmed Daryl a little bit, got a crazy ton of uniques because they, they do just kind of rain from the sky. Let's be honest, fellas. So uh, what are my thoughts now after kind of pretty much completing season two? Now, I did already kind of go through and pretty much say the positive. It was a lot of the different changes that kind of smoothed over a lot of the annoying things like the gems taking up all your inventory and things along those lines. So I think we're just going to jump in. I'll just list kind of like the quote unquote negatives for the game since I pretty much kind of already listed the positive talking about the season two. Now, as for negatives for season two, I, I think they overdid it slightly. Yes, this is a much more casual game than a lot of my audience is used to. Anyone who would see this that's maybe not my regular viewer, I suppose. I'm generally a Diablo 2 content creator. A lot of us that like Diablo 2, it's because we went and played Diablo 3 and we did not really like that game. We went back to Diablo 2 and we kind of consider Diablo 2 the gold standard, one of the best games of all time. Now for Diablo 4, it's obviously a much more casual game. It's made uh, much more to be more approachable to a larger audience. So. It is what it is. It doesn't mean it's an absolutely terrible game because it's not exactly like Diablo 2. Games can be very much different. You're allowed to like Call of Duty and you're allowed to like uh, a basket NBA 2K and Madden. And you can also like Elder Scrolls and Diablo games. You can like games that aren't exactly the same. Even games in the same genre don't have to be identical. With that being said, though, I think they went a little overboard with how powerful you were in this game. Player level of power relative to the monster. I mean... For any normal monster in the game, there was really no point unless I was running nightmare dungeons that had like the monsters 25 or 30 levels higher than me. There wasn't really any challenge literally at all. It was just running, click, running, click, running, click. And when you shot out, I would rock to fireball sorceress. I originally went firewall, then went fireball. You just melt everything. Just that's the way it seemed. And from what I had heard and seen from other people, it was kind of the experience I seen from almost everybody. It might be the case and this is just my take on it or whatever, is that, you know, some of the streamers, the people that absolutely blast the game, they find these absolute perfect builds and just the way the world is now, everyone sees these perfect builds on the internet and everybody copies those builds. Now, let me tell you if you ever seen this one or you actually go down in the comments, let me know if you ever seen this one, you go out to do a world boss and there's like five ball lightning sorceresses out there. The build absolutely slaps. It's so crazy powerful. This is true, but because somebody found it, one of the streamers and people, 
they post a video about it, and then everybody's rocking the most powerful builds in the game. So maybe all they would really need to do is kind of lower the ones that are super powerful, and then maybe the other skills would just kind of be where would be a good spot. So in my opinion, I think the player power is just a little bit too high, a little too overtuned. Now it's always a tough call and a really fine like tightrope to walk when you're gonna ever nerf anything. All them people, uh, there's just a ton of people that just love melting the game and like having absolutely no challenge and just walking around and all the monsters exploding before you can even see them. But I think in, in general, that's not a good design for like longevity of the game. So I think the power level of the uh, player needs to come down a little bit. Next up, I think the uh, end game bosses, you know, pretty much we we're talking about Duriel, but obviously things like Varshan and, uh, you know, some of the other ones, uh, Gr Grigory or what, Grigory or I forget his name or whatever, you know, the different bosses. I think there needs to be some tweaking along the lines of that too, uh, because if you actually want to, let's say, go farm and Daryl, you pretty much have to live your life based around the Diablo 4 clock. Now, obviously, you have to get those living steals from the Hell Tides. Well, the Hell Tides are only up sometimes. So, a lot of times, I want to play the game. I literally cannot. Now, I want to go farm Dur Duriel, and it's kind of one of the last things to do. Farm Duriel. I want to look for the Shaco. I'm primarily been a magic finder in Diablo 2, but I just can't do it because I can't go get the steal I need in order to go ahead and actually do it. So that's a, in my opinion, a huge detriment. And to be honest, it's the reason I stopped. So if any of the devs ever get a chance to see this particular video right here, in my opinion, anyone coming from the classic of Diablo 2 or anyone who, well, let's just say you have a family and kids and you can't really base your life around the Diablo 4 clock. You have to base your life around what your kids got to do or when you got to make dinner and things like that. Having um, the different things and the different stuff to do in the game, like gate kept behind the Diablo 4 clock, like literally I can't do it unless I play when you tell me I have to play. It just turn off. It, it makes me not ever, it, like I just quit the game. That's what happened. I quit the game because I had to play when you said I had to play and it's not going to happen. So get rid of that now. You got to find some other way to get those living steals so that even though it's kind of a chore to have to go farm this stuff in order to go do the things that you actually want to do. If I could do it whenever I wanted to do it, then I could actually, actually do it. So get rid of that right now. And next up, uh, they're okay. The way you have to go farm these pieces, I guess they do have these things in Diablo 2 as well. But just because I love Diablo 2 and I think it's one of the best games ever made doesn't mean it's perfect. Yeah, in Diablo 2, you have to go farm keys in order to then eventually go farm the torches. And in order to farm the torches, you have to go kill those bosses in order to get the pieces to make the final portal to Uber Tristram. But in my opinion, all that stuff is like a huge chore that I really just, to be perfectly honest, I don't want to do it. Yeah, in Diablo 2, I do go farm keys, but I take those keys in order to trade them for the good gear, the Griffin's eyes, the runes you need to make stuff. But I mean, in Diablo 4, trading is essentially pointless. Like you can't trade for any of the good items that you actually need. So going and farming that stuff, you know, in my opinion, it's just, it's just a chore that, that kind of gate keeps once again doing the things you actually want to do. And in my opinion, adding a bunch of boring stuff that everyone hates doing in order to do something that is fun, it's just going to keep people from playing the game. So there's another thing that I wish they would get rid of, or at least if you're going to have it in there, streamline it a bunch. And a lot of that does come back to sort of how annoying it is to get those living steals from the hell tides, essentially. Um, some of the other stuff, you get you got to get pieces from a world boss to do some other things. Uh, th that's also annoying, like everything that you need to get in order to continue to play the game, you should be able to get on your own time anytime you want to. None of it should be kept behind a specific time when you have to play. So it kind of uh, lumps into the other one, but streamlining the way to get all of those pieces just in general and making it less of a chore, in my opinion, so I can actually play the game, I think would be much better. Now, there are obviously a lot of other things. I can't mention every little thing that was changed or any little negative, I suppose, in the game, but that's some of the biggest points I believe. You know, now, uh, I originally raised it up to a six out of 10. So where would I kind of go with it now? Would I just stick at a six out of 10 now that I played the full season? And honestly, once I kind of got to the end, uh, you know, uh, actually playing together to do the world bosses so everyone can get good items and stuff like that, there was, I think it was even a little bit better than I thought. So I believe I raised it up to a six out of 10 from the initial thoughts of season two. And now to be honest, I think I would even bring that up just a tad higher. We'll call it a 6.5, perhaps a seven. 
So I guess on the screen, I'll just put a 6.5 or whatever. But so I think it did get a little better. It's definitely moving in the right direction. And obviously, I already know it's coming. Well, Phil, this should have been the way the game was. Cool. Cool story. I, I know I wish the game was perfect when it launched as well. But we're talking about reality here, not your fantasy world. So where it is at now, that's why I'm not rating it a perfect game. That's why I started off with a 5 out of 10, a mid game. It wasn't terrible, but it wasn't great. And it's moving in the right direction. I think it's getting better. We'll see where it goes in the future. Let me know your rating your thoughts down in the comment section. And hey, hit the like button, subscribe up before you go if you haven't done so already. Fellas, peace out, fellas, and keep slaying.